Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TBR's webinar, Will the IT Services Market Remain Tightly Knit, Slowly Growing, and Competitive? Insights from TBR's IT Services Benchmark. I'm Allison Crawford, and I'm hosting today's webinar. Vendors pursue every possible strategy to remain competitive in a tightly contested and slowly growing market. Strategies include expanding global delivery, investing in vertical-specific IT, and broadening their range of cloud, digital, analytics, and mobility offerings. TBR estimates the IT services market's average revenue growth year to year will accelerate slightly, but will remain in the low single digits for the rest of 2014. Demand in Europe and North America will improve gradually, but clients' hesitancy to invest in transformational products will continue to challenge growth. IT services growth in 2014 will be driven by companies focusing on incorporating vertical-specific solutions into operations to boost performance and efficiency, adding vertical-specific consulting headcount and acquiring and developing industry-specific IP-rich solutions. In the next 45 minutes, we'll cover what's shaping this market and what business models you should be aware of. Before I pass this over to Patrick, Ramunas, and Kevin, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover. First, we're recording today's session and we'll be posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the others that we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. One of the analysts will address them at the end of the presentation. Or if you'd like to set up a client discussion from a private conversation, please reach out directly to anyone on the webinar at the end of the presentation to set up that conversation. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find these slides as well as thought leadership pieces, webinar decks, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR underscore market underscore insight. And we'll share the social media links with you again at the end of the presentation. Now let me introduce Ramona Sparkas, Patrick Heffernan, and Kevin Colby. Prior to joining TBR in 2001, Ramunas worked for the McGraw-Hill companies, managing staff supporting numerous syndicated research projects, custom projects, and multi-client studies, as well as performing econometric modeling and forecasting. Patrick is a State Department and Deloitte alumni and leads our professional services research team, along with our resident expert on the management consulting market. Before his time at TBR, Kevin worked at Fidelity Investments. There, he analyzed the financial portfolios of clients to create the best solutions to meet their needs. Our analyst's knowledge of market dynamic across the services landscape is providing the expertise and insight that empowers their clients to make faster, more profitable business investments. And with that, let me hand this over to Patrick. Excellent, Allison. Thank you. So I just want to start at the top by noting that the benchmark that we're going to be talking about today is really the foundation of the professional services practice uh, here at TBR. So for those of you who have listened to this uh, webinar before, heard this presentation, we have changed up the, uh, the format a bit. We're going to cover things a bit differently, so I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And then if this is the first time that you've listened to this webinar on the IT services benchmark, then um, just want to encourage what, what Allison said, that if you have questions, please ask them. We'll tackle them towards the end. Um, what we're going to cover today Basically, overall IT trends, what we're seeing uh, in looking at all the vendors, uh, we're going to look at a few focus issues where our analysts did some deeper research over this quarter, the things that surfaced in their, in their analysis, and then we're going to drill down on a few of the vendors. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at, at IBM, Accenture, and TCS. So the first thing we'll talk about is, is the overall trends, and I want to note something on this. We take a vendor-specific approach at TBR. So that is we analyze each individual IT services vendor and then we build up our understanding of the entire IT services market based on what each one of these individual vendors is doing. But what we're talking about here is really the trends that come across the vendors that are in this benchmark, the, the 30 IT services vendors. So we think that these trends, of course, apply across the entire IT services space, but I want to make clear what we're talking about is what we're seeing from these vendors over this past quarter. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ramona. Thank you, everyone. We had a little bit of a noise here in the room. I, I don't know if everybody heard that or not. So Allison already mentioned that we are seeing that the IT services market continues to grow. 
the growth rate is on the slow side. Uh, it's in the low single digits. Uh, and if we look at this chart that we've displayed here on the screen, uh, it looks like it's probably bottomed out in terms of, of growth, and growth is going to begin to, to recover and, and, and head on an upward track. The interesting point is that, you know, IT services historically uh, has outpaced GDP growth. Uh, but in, certainly there are times, periods of time when, the, you know, the, the global market and the global economy crashes and burns. And in, during those times, IT services also starts to crash and burn a little bit. Uh, what's nice is that irrespective of what's happening in the global economy, uh, people still need to have their IT infrastructure up and running and turn to IT services in, the, in, in, in terms of, of both consulting and systems integration uh, and or outsourcing services to keep those operations running. Uh, we believe that there's been a lot of uh, fear recently, and you know, if anybody was watching the stock market today, uh, it went down again and it has crashed a couple of times over the last, last several weeks which suggests very much to people that, uh oh maybe the economy is not going well, we shouldn't be spending on our IT. However, those that do spend on, in terms of improving IT and leverage IT services are the ones that really lead the market. The vendors we cover in the, the benchmark are, for all intents and purposes, uh, the, the leading vendors in, in the marketplace, uh, and they are continuing to show growth in spite of what's happened over the last several years and this is beginning to improve. To go to the next slide, uh, where, what, what's, the, you know, what's the, the area that we're seeing the best growth? Uh, at this point, uh, business process outsourcing is, is growing the fastest. Uh, across the board, except for consulting and systems integration, uh, we continue to see a little bit of contraction in the growth rates uh, across the other three areas that we focus on, namely the outsourcing areas. IT outsourcing has been pretty heavily hit, and this has been a consequence of the emergence of cloud computing. Uh, many, many firms are, are really hesitant about renewing their IT outsourcing contracts. They're trying to figure out, do they want to move into the cloud environment? Do they want to receive their IT infrastructure and leverage it and use it uh, through hosted arrangements? Uh, subscription arrangements, going out into the public cloud and getting computing power. So it's, it's a decision point. The good news for, for the IT services side of the equation is that the consequence is everybody's turning to consulting and systems integration firms uh, for assistance. They're looking for advice. Where is the market growing? And as a consequence, uh, there is pretty, pretty you know, firm growth there. We haven't seen much decline over the last year. In fact, uh, look, you know, since we've been tracking the market for so long, I mean, the, really the, the consulting and systems integration portion of the market bottomed out way back in the beginning of 2013 and it has been sort of heading and ticking upwards slowly and surely uh, over the last year and a half. So BPO, that's the area where we're actually seeing the best growth. Uh, as a consequence that we're seeing that many firms are recognizing, that, and when I say firms, I'm talking about clients, are recognizing that uh, business operations and basically pretty standard back office operations, and even in many cases now front office operations, can be outsourced. Uh, it was for a while there thought of, well, this isn't a good idea, we want to do it all ourselves. Uh, there was a lot of hesitancy of that occurring in the European market. Uh, all that is breaking out because firms are recognizing if you don't do it, you're at a cost disadvantage versus your competitors, and subsequently, uh, you're not going to make as much money as, as your, your nearest neighbor. So we're seeing pretty much you know, a change going on in the marketplace as a consequence of cloud computing. Uh, it is having an impact on all the, the lines. We're seeing some. Uh, cannibalization, especially in IT outsourcing, uh, applications outsourcing with all the, the you know, software as a service uh, offerings of evolving on the marketplace. Firms are trying to look and see whether or not they can find an appropriate <clears throat> software package they can use rather than engineer themselves. So there's a little bit of slowness across the board. Uh, but yet modernization is going to continue to drive IT services. 
people are going to start to move forward. They're going to, and you know, try to improve their infrastructure, and they're relying on services firms to help them in that process. We'll go on to the next slide, and I'll turn it over to Patrick. Great. So we just want to highlight some of the regional differences we're seeing here, and um, the, the big stark contrast, of course, you can see there is between. Uh, EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and, uh, Africa, and APAC. And what, what's interesting here is that there, it was really vendor-specific developments in Europe uh, that, that caused this growth. And uh, on the flip side, it was really the macroeconomic uh, environment in Asia that drove down um, things happening there. So in, in Europe, what we saw is you can see the Indian vendors gaining traction that, that um, Ramuner just mentioned in, in BPO and in outsourcing generally. And then the investments that a lot of the firms, the companies have made in emerging technologies have started to pay off. And we're seeing that in particular as clients are shifting from, from legacy to cloud uh, and creating new, new opportunities there. In, in Asia, the, the sluggish economies across, you know, with, with China leading the way really has, has pushed down on, on everything, including uh, IT services revenues. And so what we're seeing as a result in, in this quarter um, is vendors starting to look outside of China as, as an alternative market within APAC. That's fantastic. That makes sense. It's a smart long-term play, but by definition, those markets are smaller than China. Uh, so even if they're growing faster, it's going to take a, a little while to catch up. So the big takeaway here then looking at the regions is that the vendors, they have to stay agile. They have to have locally based resources including, and it's mentioned at, at the bottom uh, when we're talking about APAC, the consulting-led solutions. They really do need on-the-ground consulting services with industry-specific offerings in order to adjust to the regional trends that we're seeing. So and then I'll turn it back over to Ramunas. So the overall, we'll go to the next slide, please. So who were the actual leaders in growth and or who's making money in the IT services realm? Uh, not surprising, the growth leaders tend to be the India-centric vendors. Uh, this has been a historical trend that's gone on for quite a while. Uh, all of them are continuing to grow uh, and at or above double-digit rates. Uh, and they're, they're doing it as a consequence of that they still do provide a service. I mean, the services game is still people. Uh, while there's a shift going on in the way some of these firms are trying to deal with that issue, uh, still the Indian-based vendors have the largest pool of Indian you know, people that they can support from a low-cost location, and that continues to, to be a key element in as part of the IT services realm. Interesting enough, not all of them are you know, doing this organically. Uh, two at the bottom there, corner capita and convergence, uh, actually have expanded their revenues through inorganic means. Uh, not surprisingly, their profitabilities were not as high uh, because there was costs associated with that. It, you know, it, there, the, that does take a while to be ingrained into the organizations. Subsequently, they're not running quite as profitably as, as the remaining Indian-based vendors. The big firms in the IT services firm are, are, you know, are all really over on the laggard side from a growth standpoint. Uh, part of this is the fact that they cannot, because they are big, cannot grow as much, uh, although, in fact, their growth from a dollar volume standpoint is, in many cases, equivalent to what the Indians are accumulating uh, from that perspective. So they, they do have challenges, and we don't expect them to really re recover dram dramatically from a growth perspective, but they will be slightly picking up as we move forward in, into the, the next year, year and a half, two years. And as cloud begins to evolve more and more and more uh, cloud-based services are engendered and require IT services vendors to provide either consulting services or outsourcing services around cloud, uh, that is going to really, you know, the cannibalization of the historical uh, revenue streams is going to e evaporate, and really it's going to become a cloud-driven marketplace, and that will be really the, the, the larger portion of the market. And, and then it will follow basically the same track as cloud. So with that, I'm going to turn the next slide over to... You know, our next section that we've, we've engineered in our IT services benchmark. And here's where we change a little bit from what we've done in the past. 
Uh, historically, we, we, we've tended to focus on one of the lines of business. Uh, today, we're really going to focus on really one of the areas where you know we're seeing you know a lot of traction, namely you know IP and IP generation. Uh, we're also going to focus a little bit on on something that's really we think is is an issue for some firms but an opportunity as well, the security side of the equation where we're hearing a lot of concern around security and especially around cloud and security. And then finally, we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into the one of the regions in terms of the Latin American market and what's happening there. So in regards to IP, um, it is a key focus area for virtually all firms. Uh, analytics is driving some of this. Uh, certainly, putting a layer of analytics on anything you do nowadays is key, and especially in the outsourcing world in uh, the BPO area. <laughs> but developing the IP is a real, real challenge for firms. Uh, three firms that are, are doing it successfully are really pursuing it under somewhat different avenues. Accenture is really accomplishing and, and building out their IP through acquisitions although they do have a pretty strong development uh, and an R&D activity within the organization. But they do leverage acquisitions, and they do leverage partners for them to help them develop their IP. They are very partner-centric, and they do it from that perspective, working together with their partners to create solutions that will work. TCS uh, is really investing and leveraging past engagements. Uh, previous customers that they've worked with, identified where there's various areas where they can make improvements, especially in the outsourcing arena and the BPO area. Uh, and by so doing, they're basically leveraging that knowledge they've gained to, to bring in automation, automate some of the processes, eliminate redundancies, uh, and therefore, you know, help them improve the way they're leveraging their IP and therefore delivering uh, solutions at a lower cost, and thus growing very successfully. Finally, Xerox uh, is approaching it from an R&D perspective. They look to their R&D organization to develop the IP, and they're really targeting to, to develop IP and create solutions that are very specific to, to the emerging regions. Uh, Xerox historically has been very strong in the U.S. market. They're trying to broaden their scope and their, their, you know, their presence in other areas of the world, uh, and they're working at developing you know, solutions and engendering in, in IT to build those solutions to provide them a cost savings as well as to address specific industry vertical issues within specific regional issue, areas and issues. So the next issue we're going to talk about is security, and um, this comes up again and again in our discussions with IT services vendors and their clients, and while you're looking at what's on here on the slide, I want to talk about two very specific examples um, that we've, we've come across recently. First, at, at an analyst event a few weeks ago, the, the vendor, the, the IT services vendor had a few clients, the IT directors at some huge companies, come on stage and offer their perspectives on IT issues, and all three of them said that what keeps them up at night is security. There was no, way, no better way to hear what is top of mind than to hear these IT directors say, this is the thing that concerns them most. Second, um, I was at an analyst event last week, and after a long series of, of very high-level presentations, uh, one of the other analysts asked, so how come you haven't mentioned security? And the answer was, it's, it's baked into everything we do. And I think that's, that's exactly where we are now. Security is, is top of mind for clients, but it also permeates, uh, for, the, for the leading IT services vendors, it permeates sort of everything that they do. Um, and, and you can see the three examples here. I also want to mention uh, Atos in particular um, and their ongoing relationship with the Olympics, it's, it's a fantastic test case for what they can deliver, partly because it's so high profile. It's, there are many things that are higher profile uh, than, the, than the Olympics. But also, it's over a long period of time. I think Atos got a lot of attention uh, with the games in Sochi, but the, their contract to provide security actually started in 2004, and it goes through 2024. So that's, that's an enormous opportunity for growth and 
change within the security market. It's also a huge opportunity, you know, for failure. Uh, one mistake on that level uh, with those stakes is pretty high. So, uh, you know, I think it's assets really they stand up. They've got this this mission uh, on protecting business assets in the security space. So they take a business focus to security, not a technology focus, and um, and they've embedded security all throughout all their services. And and that really that reflects what we're hearing from vendors and from clients. They want security essentially as a service, but it's assumed that it will be accepted, embedded, it's always on, it's always part of it. Um, so that, that's the story on security. If we look at um, Latin America, so I, I earlier discussed a couple of regions and focused on Europe and, and Asia. We want to focus on Latin America here. In part, we, we have another benchmark that's related to this one called Global Delivery. Uh, it actually publishes this week. Uh, and, and in that benchmark, we look very we concentrate on the resources and how they're deployed by 20 uh, IT services vendors, specifically for outsourcing and how those resources are moved around and, and the different business models that these companies leverage. And what we did this time is we dove really deep on a few countries where these vendors have operations that are serving U.S. and global clients, so essentially nearshore America. Um, in Canada, Mexico, Guatemala and Costa Rica. And the research that we did there confirmed a lot of what we saw across IT services generally, that, that investment, investments chase talent and they chase low-cost opportunities. Many of the investors, uh, I'm sorry, many of the vendors in the Latin American market are really serving global clients who have operations in the region. So they're not serving regional clients as much and they're not even serving uh, U.S. clients as much as they're serving global clients from that regional base in Latin America. And, and you know, that's, that part is, 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 I think, important to understand because what you see up here on the, on the slide with these three examples, those are companies that are standing out for the things that they're doing, but I think this cuts across all, every service line, um, across every vendor. And, and for all of them, consulting, and this came out in the, in the global delivery benchmark as well, consulting really is the lead into broader engagements. And so even though a lot of the focus has been on outsourcing, it's that consulting capability, the, the C part of CNSI that's, that's really essential. So then the last focus area for us is human capital. And uh, Ramon has said it a couple of minutes ago when he, he used the word people over and over when he was talking about um, what were you talking about exactly? I just turned the word people over and over, so it popped into my head. Um, so the, the people side of, of IT services, any, any services operations is going to be really heavily, heavily leveraging uh, people. It's, it really is a, a critical issue. Two things I want to say here. One, there's long been a chorus about the, the war on talent, and I know that that's it's loud, it's repetitive, but there's enough truth there that, that even though the circumstances change from country to country and vendor to vendor, there still is this, this sustained effort to find and recruit and retain talent that is hopefully experienced but definitely cheap. Uh, and, and then to be able to manage that talent well, that's the second part that's really, that's really important, figuring out how to manage people can be as critical to your business model uh, as, as figuring out what you're going to offer, what your services are going to be, how are you going to go to market, uh, what markets you're going to participate in, especially when you look at IT services, the, the differences in offerings and the differences in the way these different vendors are structured is, is very thin. So if, if it comes down to how well you manage your talent, and talent is essentially what you're bringing to the table, then that's, that's pretty important. So the, the last thing I want to say on this slide is, is highlight Atos again. Um, you know, they've, they've got this talent program that's described on here. We go into it in great detail within the benchmark itself. One of the things that came out, though, is their, their overall attrition rate for Atos is 9.7%, which is way below the, the benchmark average for these 30 companies, which is 15.4%. So if that difference, 9.7, 15.4, you can see that the investment in managing talent can actually pay off uh, pretty significantly. So with that, we'll now go to look at a couple of the specific vendors. And just a, a reminder here that we're, we take a vendor up approach. We look at the business models. We look at how the companies are different, not 
not based solely on the performance metrics that we saw earlier, that bubble chart, but also, you know, how are they making their money? Is their strategy, is their approach working, or isn't it? So first up, we'll have Kevin to talk about IBM. Thanks, Patrick. And here on slide 16, we'll focus first on the IBM Global Services, and they led the 30 vendors covered in the benchmark in terms of total trailing 12-month revenue. So they led the total revenue by a fair margin. Uh, they've fallen below the vendor average in terms of growth. In this section, we'll discuss the company's strengths, initiatives, and opportunities. And first up is the strengths, and some of the strengths we've seen here at uh, IBM Global Services is their ability to target C-suite executives uh, with solutions that address role-specific pain points, such as risk management, which will target the CFO or CRO, and customer engagement that targets the CMO. Product-specific example of IBM, or a product-specific example of this is the IBM interactive experience that focuses on these CMOs. Another area we see strength for IBM is their ability to integrate. Whether it be acquired, partnered, or organically grown, they can turn these capabilities into industry-leading solutions. Uh, for example, would be Watson Analytics, which was organically grown, delivered on soft layer cloud infrastructure, which was acquired. An initiative we've seen here, uh, seen at IBM, is they continue to move away from low margin businesses. A uh, hundred million dollar divestiture of IBM's customer care BPO business is an example of this. Um, some of the opportunities we see at IBM is their uh, ability to bundle industry focused offerings such as Experience One, Smarter Cities, Cloud Business Solutions which have been combined with IBM CNSI services. This will, in return, improve the company's digital transformational portfolio. Another opportunity we see is IBM's global services trailing 12-month operating margin for 2Q14 was at 18.5%, below the 20% goal that IBM set for themselves, but still well above the 13.7% vendor average in the benchmark. Uh, in summary, I guess the, we don't anticipate strong growth from IBM in the near term, but we do expect profit expansion with IBM's high margin digital offerings. These will continue, IBM will continue to be a heavy weight in terms of total revenue for the foreseeable future, even if they continue with this decelerating growth. IBM Global Services faces increased competition in commoditized areas such as ITO, BPO, and AO. Um, but a bright spot is that the positions have spelled themselves strongly in areas such as cloud and BI. And now on to Accenture on slide 17. Excellent, thanks. So Accenture, this comes, this webinar comes at a perfect time because we just published a, uh, an assessment of what they talked about last week with their four growth platforms. Um, you, you can see all the stuff here. I'll, I'll let you read the um, the strengths and the initiatives and the opportunities that lays it out. And again, within the IT services benchmark, there's considerably more detail on what's happening with Accenture and why. What I want to talk about, what we're thinking about Accenture is what we're going to be looking at uh, over the next few quarters. And the first thing is, a year from now, is Accenture going to reposition itself again? Uh, are they going to roll out? a new set of growth platforms or some other kind of configuration. And, and maybe they do that because the market has shifted and the competitors are catching up. Uh, maybe they do that because you know, they were successful, or maybe they do that because they completely misjudged what the market really wanted. Uh, you know, the, the aligning along these four growth platforms is not a risky move. If, if you had to say to us, TBR, pick the four areas of emphasis uh, that Accenture should have and hope for growth, these four make complete sense. Um, but if they do have to reshuffle, the, that strategic realignment, you have to measure that on whether, you know, whether it lasts uh, or if they're going to be rearranging in a year or so and if why. The second thing we're going to be looking at is Accenture constantly balances a downward pressure on their margins that's a result of their partner-centric business model um, that we think probably at least slightly overly favors the top three software vendors, SAP, Microsoft, and Oracle. 
So you know, they have these low-cost delivery centers, the sheer scale of the technology work, and you know, let's be honest, Accenture is a huge partner for SAP, and so does that sometimes mean that Accenture accepts lower margins uh, on their SAP work in order to keep the volume up in their, their overall leader status? Probably, possibly, likely, and that's fine, actually, as a business model. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's worth keeping an eye on because it does continue to exert this downward pressure on their margins. And then finally, you know, the, the question is, will the company be able to manage its own human resources um, as well as they manage the shift when these four growth platforms were, were rolled out? You know, 60,000 Accenture employees saw their job change. Either they got a new boss or they were put into a new organization or both. And we heard from folks at Accenture that this was a relatively painless, seamless, smooth reorganization. And, and that isn't, to, I don't want to downplay how important that transition was or that reorganization was. I think it actually points to how well Accenture managed its own human resources. And this gets exactly back to what I was saying before about the critical difference that being able to manage your human capital, being able to effectively manage what's happening within your own company can be the difference um, between being successful, being ahead in, in an IT services world and, and falling behind. So for the last company, we'll turn to Ramuna. Thank you, Patrick. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, BPO certainly is an area where we've seen and it still maintains the highest growth rate in the, within the IT services area. Uh, not surprising, TCS is very strong in BPO. Uh, their strengths actually are, you know, uh, encompass virtually all the outsourcing areas, uh, and they do have, you know, uh, consulting capabilities on the, uh, as well. Uh, what is overall the, the key thing that makes TCS so successful? Uh, certainly its size and scale. They are the largest of the Indian-based vendors. They tend to lead in the marketplace for, from the Indian-based vendors in terms of what they're doing. And, you know, they, they, they've been pretty proactive in terms of what they need to do in the future. Uh, and from an initiative standpoint, uh, you know, we mentioned here on the slide they're trying to build platform agnostic solutions. Uh, and they're, they're trying to be domain specific and building it for specific industries. When you look at it from an outsourcing span, standpoint, especially on, on the BPO side, uh, they actually have a goal in place to really reduce and improve automation up to 40 to 50 percent uh, by eliminating things that are not necessary or redundant in their outsourcing operations. Uh, this translates into a tremendous cost savings for them, uh, which they can actually then pass on some of it to their clients, and then this is why they're succeeding in the marketplace from that standpoint. You know, many of the Indian firms are, are, are looking at automation and trying to figure out how to, how to apply it. TCS certainly looks like, you know, they are very successful and are succeeding in the marketplace. <laughs> and have had, even had, have some, had some customers that have actually, you know, engaged them in contracts where, you know, you're not counting heads and you're not paying for the number of uh, people that you actually are supporting your outsourced engagement. It's basically the engagement is on a fixed price basis and, you know, we're delivering these operations through a lot of automation. From a going forward to an opportunity standpoint, uh, really outcome based value, as we kind of show here on the slide, is, is a key element. And TCS has actually started doing outcome based pricing back in 2006. Uh, they've been doing this now for over eight years. I mean, the, the initial foray into that area was kind of slow, uh, but they've had several successes uh, over the years. And it is the area where, you know, many clients are really looking to, to understand, you know, what, what am I going to gain, what's the benefit to me when I outsource, you know, a certain operation. Uh, the return on the investment of, of outsourcing is, is a critical element, and it is succeeding for TCS. So that's really an area where they're, you know, they, they are succeeding. And we believe that they're really going to have one challenge in the marketplace. Uh, and that is really the security side of the equation. Uh, they do not have a really strong cybersecurity practice, uh, but 
you know, if you can still provide a lot of value to your clients, uh, convey it and show how that value will, will work and based on, on outcomes. We believe PTS is going to continue to be leading the Indian vendors uh, into the next several years in terms of revenue growth as well as profit growth. So what have we covered today? Uh, really, you know, we know that the IT services market had growth is on the low side, but it's going to improve a little bit. And it may improve a lot as more and more clients kind of start to shift into the cloud market. Uh, we understand, you know, that uh, IP is a critical element for vendors to, you know, they need to develop it, uh, integrate it into their solutions to help them keep costs down. Uh, develop solutions that are very efficient, uh, automated, uh, error, error, less error prone, especially when you automate. Uh, and this will, will help them continue to, to grow revenues, especially on the outsourcing side. Uh, the business case around cybersecurity, critical. Uh, Patrick pointed out, you know, there's a number of different cases where, you know, security is a key issue. Uh, we've done a lot of our own research, uh, especially on the cloud side, uh, in terms of talking to end users, and security is the number one issue everyone brings up. Uh, yeah. The IT solution may be there, it may be a great move in the cloud, but the biggest question is, uh, is this going to impact my organization? And this really provides an opportunity for on the consulting and, and advisory side for, for many of the IT services firms. Uh, we're seeing a lot of success from a security, you know, for in terms of, of, you know, consulting on governance and risk management. Uh, and this is enabling many of the strategy firms to really start to play more in the cloud space as well and, and expand into that space. So it's, it's got a lot of opportunity from that standpoint. And finally, uh, emerging markets like the Latin American market uh, certainly is an area where, you know, uh, there's opportunities. Uh, customizing your deliveries to, to be close to your clients is critical in this day and age. Uh, so our, we're seeing the vendors move into the regions where they see the greatest opportunities to help their clients. And finally, we covered the, the, the three of the vendors. Uh, there certainly are others that are, are very active in the marketplace, uh, each within a certain niche area, uh, and that's going to continue. And vendors are trying to really become differentiated. Uh, some are moving towards industry verticals, some are moving towards specific horizontal solutions, you know, really focusing, say, on BI or analytics rather than anything else, uh, and that's going to continue in the marketplace. So with that, I think we're going to open up. Oh, Patrick, what is the same? Yeah, before we, before we do, sorry to interrupt you a minute. Before we get to questions, um, I want to we want to have this slide up here so you can see that we're constantly refining our research based on issues that we see developing, uh, feedback that we get from clients who say, "Hey, tell us more about this or tell us more about that." So you can see on this slide some of the kinds of things that we're looking at and some of the kinds of things that we're asking about. So if you think we're off track, if you think we need to look at something else, um, if, if there are issues that you have that you're concerned about in the IT services world, please feel free to reach out to us, talk to us, ask us uh, those questions. We're, at the end of the day, we're analysts, we're researchers. Um, we need the guidance in terms of what issues are driving the market, what questions are lingering out there. So with that, we will take some of the questions now, that have come in. Now I'm ready. All right. So we've had a couple come in. Uh, so those of you who have questions on the material for these presented, please send them through now. So when the first question we have is, do you see any India-centric vendors besides Cognizant making a strong push to specialize in specific client verticals? That's an excellent question, and you it's a bit of a trap the way that question is framed, because Cognizant, of course, just acquired Trizento uh, in the healthcare space, a massive acquisition. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head how much it was, but it was huge. And and that that has been sort of the biggest piece of news uh, out of the Indian-centric firms or India-centric firms um, in terms of acquisitions and going after a particular vertical. So yeah, other than Cognizant, what else have we seen? Well, that was the big one. Um, Wipro has has had a new focus on industrial analytics, and I say new only because it's 
it's gotten a, a higher level push from Wipro. I'm not entirely sure it's a new set of offerings so much as it is a, a renewed push on their effort. Um, and they're focused on the manufacturing space, which uh, granted is, is very broad, but manufacturing uh, and telecoms. Um, we're also seeing HCLT, there's, they've made a push, and this goes back maybe nine months, almost a year now, in engineering services outsourcing, again, focused around manufacturing, and it, you know, as a vertical, manufacturing is, again, very broad, very diverse, but I think those are two areas. focus on automotive, though. And automotive, yeah, for HCLT, okay. Thank you, Ramunas. Um, the other, you know, one other thing, TCS uh, does have a partnership with Siemens. It's actually similar to, I draw the parallel between their partnership with Siemens and um, GE and Accenture. Um, but for TCS and Siemens, it's around a an energy solution specifically. Um, I think it's Engineer to Win. I don't remember. The, they have a very catchy name for it. Um, so those are those are three other than cognizant examples. Um, I think it's possible to go through each one of the India-centric vendors and pull out one or two examples. I don't think anything stands out as loudly as the Cognizant acquisition. Um, but overall, I think the picture is clear that these guys traditionally have been so heavily uh, focused on um, the financial services sector. Uh, and Kevin just shot me, you know, $2.7 billion acquisition. So that's about as sizable as it gets. Um, so again, overall, I, you know, I think the Indian firms have recognized that they need to broaden beyond financial services, um, and they need to find ways to both broaden their uh, vertical reach, but at the same time go after specific areas where they have some strengths. Anything else? Well, you know, all of them are trying to, to find a niche. I mean, the, the, the hot markets continue to be financial services in the healthcare industry. Uh, but I think there's, you know, and the reason we're, we're struggling a little bit to give you specific examples is because every one of the firms have, may have one or two unique solutions in the area, but none of them has become to the surface as the absolute best in breed one. And I think that's where it creates the challenge here in terms of we know they're trying to differentiate, uh, but none has bubbled up to the surface of saying, this is the guy you go to every time and you need, you need help in a given specific industry vertical. Okay, uh, we actually have another um, vendor specific question. Uh, you talked about IBM strengths, but what are the weaknesses? What is it doing wrong? That's a fair question. I mean, IBM can't be the best at everything or everything to everyone. Uh, an area we're seeing increased headwinds is the pricing pressures coming out of the India vendors, uh, like we discussed before. Um, IBM is not necessarily growing very fast in the ITO, BPO, or AO areas, and not at the rate that the vendors as an average are, or specifically those India vendors. Uh, instead, IBM is focusing on cloud and BI which they see and we see as high growth areas in the future. Okay. All right. Do you guys have any throw in on IBM? We just did a, uh, a webinar last week on uh, intelligence and analytics services on the benchmark that we do on the um, BI services vendors. And if you think about the bubble chart that you saw earlier, imagine every one of those bubbles being gray with the exception of IBM, which sat in the middle of the chart and was massive. Um, they were such a distinct beast in that space that we had to make them their, their own category, sort of category of one. Um, so, it, you know, what, what are they doing wrong? They're, you know, it's hard to say. There's not, not too many... Uh, not too many missteps out there by them right now, but you know they're they're a slow moving organization. Um, so you know maybe if if the market starts to demand more agility and and uh, quicker reaction to changes in the market, IBM may be caught flat footed, but it seems unlikely. Okay. The next question we have is: uh, Can the consulting and SI vendors keep growing at the same pace? What are the challenges for them going forward? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, some people think that, well, once cloud is over and done with and everybody's moved to cloud, there's not going to be any opportunities left to consult on anything. Uh, one, 
that's going to take another 10 years. <laughs> so the, 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 the horizon is quite long for that. Uh, the real challenge for the consulting and SI portion of the, the equation, uh, is, and we've kind of mentioned it earlier on from when we, as when we talked about people and or Patrick pointed out that, you know, skill sets are critical in the whole environment here. Uh, for consulting firms and, and systems integration firms, uh, there is skill shortages, especially around the cloud market. And the real challenge is it's not just cloud, it's BI, it's analytics, uh, it's all the emerging technologies. Uh, skill, sets, skill sets are are really short. And, you know, the consulting firms grab the people early on, they train them, they, they, they have probably the largest staff. Well, you have enterprises and other, you know, and customers actually competing for the same skill sets. So, so, so there, the, the real challenge is to continue to be able to maintain and grow the skill sets needed out there in the marketplace. That's the real challenge. One of the things we've seen happening in the marketplace is, there, there, you know, in spite of the fact that, you know, attrition rates for some of the firms have gone down, uh, there's still a lot of companies robbing skill sets from each other. Uh, you know, executives being moved from one organization to another because they contain the skills that the organization needs. And then firms are willing to pay a premium to bring those skill sets in because they know that the long-term future demands that you have the skill sets in place. So that's one of the biggest challenges we believe that's, that's going on and, and that the consulting and SI vendors need to, to really focus on for the future. Okay, uh, we have another question. Uh, in previous webinars, you focused on a service line. Does the benchmark no longer have service line breakouts? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. And that, uh, at the very beginning of the webinar, when I mentioned that um, if you've been on this before, you, you may see some differences and, <clears throat> and appreciate your feedback. So that, that's great feedback right there. Yes, the benchmark itself still has all the breakdowns that it's had in the past, that is, uh, look at individual vendors. It's got the, um, the performance metrics across all four service lines. It's got the performance metrics across the different regions. Um, and within those service lines, it does, it does go into a lot more granularity than we covered here. What we wanted to do today was step back. We had gotten into a cadence of doing um, a service line uh, per quarter, and we wanted to break away from that. We had a lot of questions, a lot of feedback in previous webinars um, that more specific examples about individual vendors would be more helpful, and then calling out some of the issues that we're seeing that cut across the service lines and cut across um, both IT services and management consulting and business intelligence uh, and analytics and cloud and the rest of the things that we cover in TBR would be more helpful. So to answer the question, yes, our benchmark is still as deep and granular and expansive and broad and all those big words um, as it has been in the past. For this webinar, we wanted to focus a little bit more on the things that we covered today. Uh, we have a couple more questions in queue. Uh, so those are, there's a couple specific ones. We'll get back to the person who asked um, those questions. So check your inbox uh, if you ask any questions. The last question we have right now is, do you see consolidation happening with bigger companies acquiring or splitting and Indian companies buying bigger companies? I think this is, this is a very interesting question. Uh, you know, we've seen consolidation occurring in the industry. Uh, acquisition has been the route to grow uh, for many large firms in terms of filling in niches and holes in their uh, portfolios. We don't see that disappearing anytime soon. That's going to continue. Uh, developing IP, and this gets back to my whole develop IP question, uh, is a time-consuming process if you do it internally. Uh, if you can find a partner that can do it and help you, great. If that partner uh, is viable and you can make that IP your own exclusively, that's even a better approach. So definitely acquisitions is the route. Uh, on the Indian side of the equation, um, the Indian vendors have made small acquisitions, but they've never bought companies bigger than themselves, and I don't think they ever will. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for the Indian firms is the cultural uh, integration. Uh, they function in a certain way, method, shape, size, form, uh, and that really creates some challenges when you're trying to integrate uh, a company out of the European theater or the American theater uh, in terms of approach to the marketplace. 
we've heard of instances where you know they they've acquired some people or or small groups of people, and more than often than not, half the people decide they have to leave because it's just a culture clash. They're not comfortable with the way uh, the organization operates. So it, it's a big challenge for the Indian firms uh, from an acquisition standpoint. And that's why they tend to acquire smaller firms. Uh, if they can gain some IP, great, uh, but they're not necessarily, uh, we don't see any of them really going out there and gobbling up any one of the major IT services firms out there in the marketplace at the present time. One of the things that came out in the, the research for around global delivery, the global delivery benchmark looking at um, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Mexi and Mexico in particular is how the India-centric firms have been steadily acquiring talent in those countries, those near shore U America's countries. Um, and they've been building up their capabilities and expanding their offerings, but they're doing it at a pace that is, well, somewhere between slow and steady. Um, it, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been rampant. It hasn't been some sort of excited gold rush into, um, into that emerging market. And I think that's probably reflective of how they approach things overall. So will they make these big splashy acquisitions or, or break up or form some sort of marriage with uh, another firm? I, I just don't see that happening. And it's culturally, business model-wise, practices-wise, it's not what they do. So I hope that answered the question. So we don't have any questions in queue uh, right now. So with that, I'm going to start wrapping up the presentation. Um, as Patrick mentioned, this is a new format to our webinar. <clears throat> so as you're leaving, we have a quick survey, you know, three questions. Um, did you find the content valuable? How good with the presenters? Is there any other open-ended feedback? You can share any feedback with us. We want to make sure that we are bringing uh, the right information to you when we do these presentations. We do appreciate your time and want to make sure that you're getting the most you can out of these presentations. So any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to share all the social media links with you at the end of the presentation, so I encourage everyone uh, to join the analysts listed here on their Twitter handles as they are sharing their opinion uh, almost on a daily basis in terms of what's happening in the market, and there's a lot of good insight in there. And you can also join um, the Twitter handle uh, for QBR here as well and join our social media presence on SlideShare, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can look for this presentation and any of the others that we've posted. Um, I think we're going to be doing the Global Delivery Market Landscape webinar probably beginning of the year, Patrick. Is that the plan? We have scheduled for November. Yeah. Okay, so we're yeah. doing that in November, so keep an Global eye out. Global Delivery? Yeah. Yep. We're November. going to be doing that webinar, so we did yeah. talk about that today, so we do encourage you to get uh, another perspective of what's happening in the services market on that webinar. So if you haven't seen that invite, please keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm going to keep the uh, chat function open for another couple of minutes just in case there's any last minute you know, questions or you'd like to have a private conversation with the analysts here based on what's happening in the market, anything specific you, you know, as a client, you do have that right, uh, and we encourage it to work with us uh, on specific questions and problems. So with that, I want to thank everyone for your time today, and we look forward to speaking again in November, and again next quarter we'll do this webinar again. So thanks everyone for your time, and we'll talk to you soon.